Has Apple fallen from grace? This is the question that I have thought about for many years now. This is the original iPad. When Steve Jobs demonstrated this device off in January of 2010, it revolutionized the tablet industry. Even to this day, seven years later, Apple has a monopoly on the entire tablet industry. But you will have noticed, and I'm sure you are very much aware of this, that Apple has not had a revolutionary product in seven years. So it begs the question, has Apple fallen from grace? This is the iPhone 4S. This was the first iPhone that had serious competitors. Samsung had its Galaxy S2, which at the time, I still personally believe the iPhone 4S was the better phone, just due to the overall experience. But Samsung did pose a real threat. Now, up until this time, Apple really had the reins over what we could call a great smartphone. They had the best software, arguably the best hardware, even though it had a 3.5 inch screen, at the time it was perfectly fine. And then as we know in 2012 with the iPhone 5, Apple did carry on. But I do notice a bigger trend within the industry. In the past seven years since the introduction of the iPad, essentially what the industry has done or what Apple has done up until now is they have not been able to innovate as much. What I have noticed though, is that innovation has become very prevalent from other manufacturers. For example, we can take the Mac. Now at the time, PCs were very far behind, maybe not in power, but in pure elegance, Apple clearly had the reins over that. But we are in 2017 now, and what I have noticed, for example, Microsoft just recently released their Surface Laptop, as well Huawei released their MateBook. And what I can tell you is that these devices are as beautiful as the new MacBook Pro. But what I've noticed, especially from Apple, is Apple sort of built their entire company on being the first to do it best. And while this has been true up until now, it begs the question, can this continue? Now, for example, I mean, we could look back to 2002 when Apple announced their iMac G4. It was a rounded sort of half spherical base plus a swivel arm, and it was a beautiful device for the time. Now, what Apple has done, and this is especially true with the iPhone, when Apple announced their iPhone in 2007, it was such a revolutionary device that when everyone bought one, it sort of became the de facto smartphone. It really did. And it would take years for Android to catch up. And now for me personally, and I, and it, and I might differ from you on this, I think Android surpassed iOS in, I would say 2014. Up until then, Android had been sort of this conglomerate of different manufacturers. And while it still is, Google has perfected Android, in my opinion. And I think it goes to show where the industry is going. In 2001, Apple hit hard at the music industry with the introduction of the first iPod. Now, if we compare the release of the iPod to that of the Zune from Microsoft, you begin to see the differences in just the way Apple runs. Everything that the Zune failed at played on an Apple strength. Apple is the company that can take software that is very simple and combine it with an elegant device. And although they may be underpowered compared to a PC, for example, or an Android phone, but it's that combination for people that makes the premium on their devices worth it. And Apple knows that. And this is because, to me, we are beginning to hit a partition in technological development. If you look at the difference between a computer in 2017 versus one released in 2010, the difference, while big, is mainly in the internals. But if we compare a laptop, for example, let's say the MacBook Air, which came out in 2010, versus 
a MacBook in 2003, you begin to see the differences. The differences were so vast that it did feel like you were beginning to see all this new technology and this exponential increase in just horsepower of our machines overnight. It felt like there was a new development. I can remember back to even 2011 or the 2010 or the difference between 2009 and 2010 with the iPhone. Every time Apple would go up on stage to release or announce their iPhone, you knew that it was going to change the industry forever. But we have gotten to a point now, especially with the iPhone 8 coming up, that although we assume it will be a big upgrade, at least I hope it is, we don't really care. Because the differences between this upcoming device and the last one aren't as big as they were before. And other companies, because of this partition, are now able to catch up. And, at least in my personal opinion, and in the opinion of many others, arguably these competitors have surpassed Apple. As do we consider the elephant in the room, Mr. Stephen Jobs. I remember that day in 2011, October. I remember hearing the news. And obviously it was very sad, but you began to see that his effects ripple through the industry after. Steve Jobs really did... Steve Jobs is responsible for so much of the technology we have. He's responsible for this. He's responsible for this. He is responsible for the way the world is now. And I don't think Tim Cook... And while he, I just, it feels as though Tim Cook has not carried on that legacy. He may be good at continuing those sales and playing to consumer strengths. But in terms of a visionary, someone who is able to see the industry for not as it is now, but for what it was going to be, for what it would be in the future, how it will be in the future, Steve Jobs was excellent at that. And I don't think we will begin to see major increases in technology, especially Apple, until someone like him steps up and begins to change technology again.